I think we're live now. Yeah, buddy. Time to do this. All righty. Got my Tostitos. I'm all good to go. Mmm. All right. Delicious. Now, first off, we need we need someone to check to see if this is actually streaming on YouTube right now. All right, I shall. Because I need to make sure this is actually working. <laughs> it should be in the subscription box, right? Yeah, it's in the subscription nice. box. I saw, I saw the it's schedule. In, it's in nice. the what? Okay. Yeah, I can't see anything with these on. I, it doesn't show up for me, but it probably does for everyone else. I can't see anything with these on. Yeah, it's working. It oh, I just heard myself. Okay, so something's working now. Sweet. Sweet. I'm hearing the echo. Okay, so that's it. Do we have an audience yet? We'll probably know later on, I don't know. Because I don't think it tells on this. I think it tells in the... Um, yeah, you're going to have to keep... Um, Thing. You know, I'll keep that open and I'll just mute it and uh, I'll watch the view count. Okay, because I yeah. think the uh, I think the YouTube thing has like a a text chat on the side, right? Does it have that? I yeah, have no I idea how this works. Yes, there is live comments oh, and oh. some dude is talking. Okay, Wait, someone, someone's talking right now. Yep. Hey, okay. someone, uh, Brandon, post it uh, post it on Facebook. So therefore, uh, so I can't see any of this. You you can't? No, wait a minute. Are you on the YouTube page? I will be soon. Yeah, go there. Is um, it in... I'm going to keep these swag glasses on. Oh, wait. Okay, I see live now. Oh, damn. Yet, I don't know how to... Oh, this works. Okay, I got it now. What the fuck? Hey, Brandon, you should post that on Facebook so people can actually see. Yeah, I'm sharing this right now. Yeah, We're doing it live. Oh, it's just in this thing. Woo! I think that works. So All I think right. it goes down. Is that what it does? Alrighty. Uh, gotta put these swag. I'm gonna like this shit. Maybe we can get people see this shit. Hey, get people. that's inappropriate language, bruh. Yeah, I get offended. I don't like those curse words. No. No, man. I don't like those curse words, no. Uh-uh. You're the fans me. Okay. I don't like them curse words, no. Uh -uh. Okay, so what are we talking about? What? What is what is we talking about? Yeah, what is we talking about? Get it, boy. Bring well, it. I had a topic I had an idea for, and it was just kind of a general question. Um, that question would be, what do you rate your albums based on? Like, when you review, do you base your albums on, like, a certain scale, or just your enjoyment of that particular album and not held against other albums? I, For me, personally, it's the enjoyment I get out of the record. That's what I rate it from, uh, mostly. I would have to say the same. It's mostly based on like a singular thing. Like I look at the I look at the album as you know just the album. I don't try to really compare it to anything, unless it's like comparing it to their other material. I try to keep it as its own kind of thing. Yeah. What about you, Fulton? Well, I mean, I think. I mean, Anthony Fantano said it best that everything is put into context whether we like it or not. We're always constantly comparing things to a band's past work, to other bands' works, to artists and bands of other genres. So when I'm thinking of a grade for an album, I'm definitely comparing it to the band's previous work, or if it happens to be a band's debut album, for example, I'll definitely try to compare it to similar artists within that genre and how it might stick out, how it might get buried, you know, under the tide, if there are other bands that are better, of course. Um, but basically, you know, I take into account, like, you know, how is the songwriting? Is, is it well produced? Is the band playing and writing to their full potential? Is it honest? Does it flow? Does it have any sort of coherence and, you know, good consistency to it? I mean, all those things kind of matter. And that's definitely something I don't see in a lot of pop music. I think we just lost yeah. Brandon. 
Oh, I'm back. I don't know what happened. Uh, I think it's a lot easier for me to rate and kind of put a grade on metal music, not just because, um, not just because that's what I listen to the most of, but I just think there's a lot more substance to it that you could you look at all these different facets. With pop music, yeah. it's this very cookie cutter half the time, and yeah. You know, really, what what can you base it on? I mean, half the time, the artists aren't even writing their own thing. So it's like, okay, how can you really say that song is better than that song if they had a different writer, different producer, different people playing on the track, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. So, I, I guess for me, it's kind of the same thing where if it's like a band's like third album, I compare it to the first two. Or right. I guess a really good example for me would be like Morbid Angel. Even on like that last album. Even that on its own, it would suck, but even in context of it, their past work, absolutely horrific. And I think that's why, like, I gave it a zero. I probably would have gave it a higher score if it was just, like, a standalone <laughs> record, but compared to, like, what they have done, not happening. Yeah. Yo, Fulton, uh, try and get... Try and send another um, thing to um, John. He asked if he okay. needs to know how to get in the video. Let me... There should know, be a thing question. right on the Google Plus page for um, Fulton's Review's official G Plus page. They'll have, like, a hangout, and you can join. Oh, is it there? Yeah, that's how I joined. Okay, Yeah. then tell him that, because I don't... Okay, he's there. He's, 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 he's here. Boom. Boom, baby. There we go. Because I wasn't sure if what I was just about to do was going to close this and open up a new one with him. Yeah. So, okay, at least it's easy for you to get to these. So you yeah. just send out a link or something and it'll just be join this. That works, okay. I like that. Send out a link or something and it'll just be... <coughs> link. I've seen him twice. Yeah, oh I've no, seen him twice. Oh, I'm there twice. <laughs> there. Oh, wait, there he is. There I am. There we go. Sporky. Sporky. Yeah, John's here. Oh John. my god, John is here, guys. I'm so happy. <laughs> oh my god, it's been like it's been like maybe <laughs> what five or six hours since I last talked to you playing Halo uh, Halo Four. I know it's a painful way. I finally got that. That's great. <laughs> I know you were unsure. I'm gonna eat some French fries. I'm missing Dude, I swag them. glasses. I feel left out. I'm yeah. not wearing swag glasses. Swag glasses. I don't need glasses for swag. Swag. Swag, I have, motherfucker. I have other glasses I could wear, but these are just way too over the top. <laughs> yeah, they're perfect. Yeah, I basically had those, but they're broken about three pieces now. <laughs> just like those headphones? <laughs> A boot three yeah. pieces? Mask A boot three tape. pieces? <laughs> Fucking masking tape. All right, I think we should um, ask Sporky's opinion on this. On what I missed out. All right. Um, what do you base your album, review, like your scores for your reviews on? Do you hold it against like the band's past work, or do you do it as like a standalone, or is there a set standard? <laughs> oh, it's a standalone for sure. Like I don't try to compare it to their past work. Like, for me, it's basically if it hits me on either an emotional or just any other level like that, if I like it, like, in terms of the way it appeals to me as a person, then I'll love it. Like, if their last album sucked, it doesn't matter to me. If their new album sounds good and it hits me, then I love it. All right. I take each album as its own unique experience, not really as yeah. A I feel I feel kind of the, I feel kind of the same way with that as well, especially with like kind of like with In Flames because like the um, the last album, what was the album before uh, Sounds of a Playground Fading again? Oh, Sense, Sense of, of Purpose. Yeah, that, I mean that was the, my least that was like my least favorite In Flames album, but it was still it was still pretty good in my eyes. But like there was something I, in I, my room. I didn't want to <laughs> like. I don't want to like compare it to their new what album. Is that? <laughs> this is like the worst time for this to possibly happen. What is in your room? I don't know, but it was huge. It it's was ghosts. probably a bee. 
It must have been my deer. <laughs> it's ghost. So it's ghost. <laughs> but yeah, back to what I was Wait, saying. I need to like get to the bottom of this for a second. It's just like the thing I have about like In Flames fans. They compare like the new album Sounds of the Playground. Yes, Fading, I'm sick of hearing about that. I I, I get pissed off about that because obviously In Flames is not going to go back to their old '90s melodic death metal sound. They're going to stick to what they're doing. I like both, so... I, I exactly, to... like, I love both sides of it. And I plus, their lyrics a... are trademark in flames still, whatever yeah, area you're true. in, so... I guess for me, when, when it comes to in flames, new and old, it's not necessarily me comparing their past work to their current work. I just find their current work to be completely subpar to what they have done. And I feel yeah. like they're capable of doing it again, and that's why it just kind of bothers me to listen to this new stuff, but I accept the fact that bands change, so yeah. there's no use in bitching about it. And for me, they will never beat Clayman, but I still like the new stuff. Yeah, I'm not exactly. Lie. Like, I think Clayman is a masterpiece. I don't care if they're old or new, like, as long as they still hit me, then I still love them. That's basically how it is. Yeah. yeah. A Sense guess... of Purpose and uh, Sounds of a Playground Fading uh, both hit me just as well as Say, yeah. Clayman did. I mean, not to that I, extent. I, I'd but... say out of the last two records, I say Sounds of a Playground Fading is my favorite. Out of the two. Well, but, yeah, in my, sure. but in my eyes, it nothing that they, they, they've done or will ever do in my eyes will uh, top uh, the gesture race. Well, an album with me that's right up there with that album is Come Clarity. I don't know. That's Come one of my Clarity favorites is, by the band. Come Clarity is... A really, really good album. I, I find uh, "Crawling Through Knives" is probably one of my favorite all-time In Flame songs. I'm a reroute to remain guy. I love That's that awesome. Album. That's a that great album, album too. It's funny. I used to hate that album. It took me about maybe a year, a year and a half to actually appreciate what that, that album was, was trying to do. "Cloud Connected" is one of my favorite In Flame songs. So same with that. Same with that in uh, "Trigger." Yep. Like, I was just, so happy. I was so happy on he In Flames' headlining tour earlier this year that they played Trigger. That was amazing. Yeah, we were there. <laughs> yeah, me and Brandon were at that show. It was amazing. It's just come clarity. It feels like the whole band is just spilling their guts on that album, and I just oh for sure. I'll tell you about coming clarity. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey Brandon, Brandon, remember the remember how we actually met at that In Flame show? Was it in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, I kind of, not really, maybe. I'm not sure. I like, I like grabbed your shoulders and fucking shook you like a damn infant. <laughs> <laughs> I just grabbed your shoulders and fucked. That's and then you're Surprise like, bitch, give me a hug. And then you're like, bitch, give me a hug. <laughs> this is a true story. I'm not lying about this. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm afraid to move in here. I don't know what that thing was, but it was huge and it had like wings. It wasn't a moth. That thing looked like a wasp or something. I don't even know how the hell it didn't even exist in the in the in the fall. I don't even know how it got in this house. Show it with your hands, dude. You have a beard. I shouldn't be afraid of something like this, but not knowing where it is. Yeah, I'll be honest. Hornets and stuff like that freak me out. Dude, and I'll be I honest. Some, I'm gonna be I got what it is. My jacket like twice this year. Like, I'm fucking terrified of grasshoppers. I mean, those things are, like, <laughs> nasty. I got <laughs> stung by two yellow jackets this summer while mowing the lawn in the same fucking area that I mowed. Yeah, so I would not mow that area. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well just wear a fucking bee's net suit or some shit. Might as well wear that. Well. fulton has got a beer. All right, I'm I'm really uh, getting, actually. I, I, I'm taking I'm taking these glasses off. Yeah, I just took mine off. Let's <laughs> read some of these comments. I yeah. don't know. I totally I haven't been reading them. I didn't get on the topic of in flames. We're talking about the reviewing thing, like basing it upon past work. Um. Let's see what I is that because I wasn't paying attention. I guess another thing for me that affects like when I review an album is. I have to get some sort of feeling from it. Like, I have to feel something. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, 
of violent emotion from like the music being so brutal or sadness from it being so dark or whatever. Mm. There has to be something. Exactly. Otherwise, I'm not going to Same way. It was Brandon the Dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I oh, wish it I knew was. What that was what that was for. I missed that joke out of context, but it's still funny. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, there doesn't need to be a context for that. Talk about Coloss. Speaking of Coloss, I got the poster right here. So I have the something somewhere. Dude, when I went to buy Coloss, I couldn't find a special edition in my store, and now it's actually there. I'm pissed. Bam. Um, Coloss, motherfucker. We have a huge, so, huge poster boom. of it in my band's practices. Like, you know, nice. I don't think I ever opened this poster. To think of it. <laughs> I had mine up on my wall for a while, so. Do you think I don't like about posters coming inside albums? Is is they're all folded and you get all the creases. Yeah. But That's what it's sucks. It's pretty cool though. I got it. I like this a lot. I hate it when it's like in a jewel case and it's like the book like and artwork, so you take it out and hang it off. Mm. You Dude, no longer the... have the cover. The shittiest freaking poster I have is my Winds of Plague signed poster from when I went to the World Tour. Because the heart machine. Here's here's the reason why it looks like shit. Because I had it in my bag, and then one, and then like on the same day it was raining. Oh, yeah. This one's so. pretty bad, actually. Sadly, because my dog came in here and she scratched part of it, and then one day when she was rolling around. She actually ripped it off the wall. So there was like a paper messing. Mm. And by a boy, nice one came all the way from uh, the UK inside like a paper envelope. So that it got crumpled. And when I was, when I ripped the package apart to get into it, I actually ripped off a massive chunk at the top. So that poster looks ugly. Uh, let's see, Mark Moore. Comments. Yeah, what are your guys' favorite prog albums? Uh, prog albums. I probably. Ooh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's tough because oh, I don't oh, listen to it. It would probably end up being a Dream Theater album. Hmm. I'd probably say yeah. New BT Van, baby. Any Dream that's... Theater album is great. Any Rush album is great. Uh oh, actually, now that I think about, I have to say, I have to say, <laughs> moving. Like one of the only bands that I think can carry through 70s, 80s, 90s, and then into the 2000s and actually do it well, because bands like Yes, they don't exist to me in the 80s. I, I yeah. don't understand that. I have to Rama say, I have to say, my, album, but none of the other stuff. I'd say my favorite prog album is probably Moving Pictures. Oh, there you go. Yeah, favorite, favorite album of all time, right there. Nice. I think my that. favorite prog album would be. I don't even know if you could consider Dry Heat prog. I've heard that they're considered prog. prog. I don't know. Um, if definitely prog rock. Right. and Wizards. If not, then I'm gonna say probably something by Opeth. Maybe Soul Life. Well, mine is oh, okay. mine by far is this Crack the Sky by Matt. Crack the Sky. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Oh, it was the super special edition, motherfucker. The right there, but it is there. <laughs> How many hundreds of dollars did that cost you, Brandon? Twenty dollars. Really? Goes for about hundred fifty online. So yeah. What? I'm really yelling that. Yeah, yeah really. this motherfucker. <laughs> oh, you got the accordion thing. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> wow. Yes. It's got this crazy, awesome artwork inside, and when you look through it, it all like blends together. That's amazing. I it's want beautiful. it. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Favorite album of all time, so. Yeah. Might as well have a decent version of it. So. I don't even own my favorite album of all time yet. What is I it? Rust in Peace by Megadeth. You do not own Rust in Peace? No, I do not. How dare I you? I even I owned Rust in Peace. <laughs> <laughs> I used to own my favorite album of all time, and then it got stolen. Uh, Celtic Frost Monotheist. That's awful. I own mine, but it's a very generic copy of it. Oh, oh, oh John, John right on. I just ordered that on yeah. vinyl for 12 bucks. 
Yeah. Wait, why would you call that? I'm yet card? to order it on vinyl. I need to do that. Twelve dollars on Amazon. There's another copy left if you want to get it. Like. 12. Wait, guys. I, I was I I made a mistake. This is my favorite album of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Felony by Amir is my favorite. Ten bullets out of ten. I got nothing I think, to compare I think, that. I think, the, I think, I think, I think bullets out of ten. I think I think Lulu's my all-time favorite, actually. No, hold on, hold on. I guess something better. I see someone who owns that. Just like I don't need their collection and just be like Lulu. Well, that's. I don't know. I don't know nice. anyone that owns that album. <laughs> if I saw that, I would punch him. <laughs> Why? I remember going. I remember going to my local music store and actually seeing like a shelf full of Lulu CDs. I'm like, wow, nobody's buying this. So many Lulus. It's hilarious. My the FYE in uh, my area, they have uh, like 30 copies of Lulu and the and Santas for like 7.99, and no one bought them. And they're like this special edition. Hey guys, I got my favorite albums of all time. Okay, first off. <laughs> We got Monkey Business by the Black Eyed Peas. Um, we got Under My Skin by Avril Lavigne. We have Every Day by the Dave Matthews Band. Hey, Dave Matthews Band ain't that bad. We got Silver Side Up by Nickelback. I own that. I own that. Classics. Classics, Classics man. Classics. Ten out of ten. Oh, no. Ten out of ten. Yeah, 10 out of 10 in total. <laughs> this is my favorite album of all time. Satellite by P.O.D. <laughs> P.O.D. Satellite, I want the poster. No shame, no shame. <laughs> I don't yeah, have any shame. <clears throat> I own that album too and I have no shame. I think I had that album once. It's not here anymore. I don't know where it is. I, I didn't. somewhere. One of those strange albums that I think all of us had for some reason. You know, it was my favorite band, so shut your mouth. Yeah, same here, dude. <laughs> yeah, Fulton. Yeah, Brody. Oops. Yeah, Brody. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let's discuss. <laughs> yeah, let's discuss. Let's come up, let's come up with a new topic. Okay, I'm going to put right. my spag glasses on. Okay, Wait. let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Black okay, so I was searching Pitchfork the other day, and <laughs> I saw this new artist. You probably don't know about him. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a feeling those exact words have been uttered. Oh, you don't even know. <laughs> God. Mm. Uh, one of my friends just suggested something. He's like, what makes an album for you? Like, in general, what makes an album for you? Hmm, that's a good that question. That question sucks. <laughs> Kidding. That's a one. How dare you, Fulton? How I dare? What makes an album for me? Like that's a very. It's got songs. <laughs> <laughs> it has songs and sounds it has and songs. stuff. And really, it really hard. awesome, like chugs. Yeah, there has to be chugs. <laughs> Lots of chugs and breakdowns. Polyrhythm. Breakdown, bro. Lots of breakdowns, bro. Two step. It has to be a stick to your guns album. Oh, there now I have glasses too. <laughs> That's what makes an album for me. It has to be stick to your guns. I love I love how you join the uh the this uh sunglasses thing, Johnny. I have no <laughs> idea what fun they are. They're from the uh, toolbox. Yeah, they are. Oh, all right. Let's do it. Let's do Google effects all up in this bitch. <laughs> I'm trying to respond to some of these comments. I just already. I'm putting up? The search channel. Double down. glasses. What's up? Get on my level. <laughs> Get on my level, bitch. <laughs> Get on my level. I got double sunglasses. <laughs> And a beard. What's up? Go home, Brandon. You're drunk. <laughs> no, oh, make, guys, you're don't drunk. Don't make me put a beard on my beard. <laughs> I'll put a mustache on my mustache. 
I'm gonna put a beard on my beard. <laughs> Wait, how did this? All right, I'm here? bringing out my uh, bard figureness look. Yes. Yeah, the face. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do the bard, bard face. face. Glorious. We gotta. Where is that thing? You have to do the face. There's the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so perfect. You're more like a pirate than normal. <laughs> Screen capped. So great. Screen capping. Everyone that. watching this must think we're absolutely on drugs. Because we yeah, are. Now I'm, a, now I'm a sir. Dude, I shot up four marijuanas before this. Four marijuanas. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is even more legit. Damn. Yeah. All right. Actually, I have a. I think we should uh, ask them, uh, answer some of these questions. Are we getting any? Uh, there's one. Someone, uh, a a seven X Wee Man asked, "Do you guys like Faith No More?" I don't. Me? No, not at all. I like them a little bit. I'm not a huge, huge fan. I'm iffy, to say the least. I think I like what their impact on music was more than their actual music. Yeah. Wait a minute. Is it for example? Hatton? Fulton, you look like a hipster with the beards. It's Ryan Weist. <laughs> all hipster all the time. I'm, I'm super hipster right now. What's up? I got more swag than all y'all. I'm drinking peach tea. Where's your god? <laughs> peach tea? Celestial peach tea. Uh, Alright, what's some other questions? Right, I can't see that. Mustaches need to go away. I can't see the chat, because I'll yeah. lag. Yeah, I think I'm it looking is at it right, video a little bit. Looking at it right now. It doesn't it doesn't update very quickly, though. Favorite no, Pantera doesn't. album and why? Uh, vulgar display of power. Because... I'm not seeing that at all. That would probably be the most hard-hitting album in their discography, in my opinion. Favorite Pantera album, the one that doesn't exist. I don't have one. <laughs> I I'm not a fan of Pantera at all, so I, I, I like, can't really answer. I like the song "Drag the Waters." That's about it. I own Cowboys from Hell because it was six bucks at Future Shop. I I mainly mainly. Mainly, I like Vulgar Display of Power because that was that came out like after hey, I was quit wanking over there. It's not allowed. Ah! Yeah, we're now no guitars allowed, Brandon. Ah, Brandon, what are you doing, Brandon? Right, Brandon, go home. Stop. 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 <laughs> Stop. I want to sing you hey, guys a we gotta, song. We gotta, we gotta obey the rules. Yeah, <laughs> there's certain I'm, rules, Brandon. I'm not getting in trouble for that. So no one a single. Say fuck that. No. What are you doing? <laughs> what is going on? Don't make me break. <laughs> don't make me break out my drum kit. No, no one's breaking out nothing. I'll, I'll break, break out, out my dick. Check all y'all. I don't need you people. Yeah. I think I can. Favorite Opeth album? Wait a minute. Ooh, good question. I think Favorite I can mute you. Opeth album. I'd have to say Ghost Reveries. Ghost that Reveries. One. That one. Ghost uh, Reveries, Ghost Reveries. <laughs> and then there's this, then there's this one. This one's always. Oh, fun. Watershed. This one's fine, though. Lucky. Yeah. I guess my favorite is Still Life. We got All their three. albums are good. You're, you're still like for Damnation. All their albums are good. They are good. All right. All right. So, are we getting more comments? Um, oh, wait, I don't know. Eleven new ones. I'm <laughs> still on the same one from minutes ago. Hostile. No, there's a thing on the top that you can just say update. you can like enable automatic updates. Huh. First album you ever you owned. Say. First album I ever owned was actually. Uh, Satellite by P.O.D. I have it right here. First album I ever owned. And Justice for All. Arcana. First uh, album I ever owned was the self-titled album by The Doors. 
Um, for me, it was two albums. I went out and bought them the same day. P.O.D., The Fundamental Elements of Southtown, and Evanescence of Fall. You really weren't kidding about that, were you? <laughs> no, I wasn't. The, that album is still my favorite P.O.D. album, and I consider it to be great. It's probably that. my ever was kind of Jimmy Eat World's Futures. I'd have to say, I'd have to agree with you on that, Sean, that uh, Fundamental Elements of Southtown is their best album. There. What was the single from that album? Second one a- I ever owned. Uh, this is a good one. If metal didn't exist, what do you think you would be listening to? Rather oh. rock. Mm. Easy. Pro- it'd probably be something along rock. It'd be Pro- folk prog me. rock or probably like jazz fusion or something. I'd, um, yeah, I'd probably be a jazz fag. All right, I'm <laughs> gonna be honest, and I'm gonna hate myself for saying this, but before I got into metal, I was into country, so I would still probably be listening to country. How dare you? You are hey, not true anymore. Don, <laughs> I was the same way, okay? So untrue. So um, uncult. Don, so just ask, uh, you guys like Immolation? I do. Love them. I don't really listen. I, I, I do. listen to a few songs, but they're actually pretty good. I um, like them. I never really listen to them. Wait, we're getting comments on the video itself. Yeah. The Heart, the heart Machine thoughts they rule love them. Brandon, oh, comment on The Heart Machine. Uh, so what's your what's your I Russell the Bear once album? That doesn't make any sense. Um, I I hate I Russell the Bear once. I I saw them I, live a couple months ago. Hate them. I don't care for them. It's a strong word, bro. I don't I don't Definitely. care for their music, but they're actually a very entertaining band live. I I don't only go see them just for the entertainment. I really don't care about the songs. Yeah, at all. I would like them because they got a chick in the band. Yeah, I'd let yeah. her scream on my dick any day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't let her break squeal. Get it? <laughs> it's a sexual fun. <laughs> Not really. Blah, blah, blah. Like I'm waiting. Cool live show. Better than watching fucking TV reality cockwash shows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is amazing. Best band that's bad live. Mm. Ooh, Whitechapel used That's... to fall into that category. Yeah, I, I was going to say that, because when I first saw them, they were terrible live, and now they're, like, really fucking tight these days. Uh, I've seen some pretty shitty bands. So. And, I mean, not even, like, not bands that are shitty. I mean, bands that were just shitty live. Yeah, that's uh, terrible live. <laughs> favorite guitarist? I hate that question. I'd have for for me, even though I'm a drummer, I'd have to say my favorite guitar player is Marty Friedman. Hmm. If any of you even know who that is, yes, of course. That. That's too deep for us. Yeah. Yeah, too underground. Too underground. Bass player of Metallica. <laughs> uh, favorite guitarist. Uh, drummer of a, Megadeth. Right. Drummer of Megadeth. <laughs> right. Danny Walker is my favorite guitarist. Do you um, like troll bands like Anal Cunt? Yes. I wanted to finish yes. answering that first question. Yeah, let's both answer my the question, Duncan. Favorite oh, guitarist. Rhino Twat. Favorite guitarist, I have the signature right here, Chris Letchford. Hey, we both have that poster. Yes. I don't think you can see it, mine. I can see it, kind of, well, it's but kind yeah. Of yeah. Signed by the band. Hey, I met question. you that night. Really? No, I think I'm lying. Oh. Well, you were pretty drunk, so... I'm drunk all the time. <laughs> well, I think we have a problem we need to talk about. Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. Know. What's a problem? <laughs> You've been drinking a lot. Oh, this I is a good one. I had anything today. Hardcore versus deathcore. Wait, so, favorite guitarist. Favorite guitarist as a soloist, Eric Johnson. Favorite guitarist in a band, John Petrucci. Both great guitar players. Um, I would probably pick... First one that comes to mind is Ryan Knight. I worship his work on uh, We Are the Nightmare. Oh. Alright, so hardcore versus deathcore. Um, I don't really care for true hardcore. I like power violence and that sort of stuff. So I would probably go with deathcore. Uh, yeah, I'd probably go with Deathcore too, because they're like the only, the only, the only real, like the only hardcore band I really listen to is Hatebreed. 
You know, I don't think I've ever seen a Hatebreed. I'm a hardcore fan. That your favorite hardcore band is Hatebreed. Well, I, I also listen to Biohazard every once in a while. They'll still punch you in the face for that one. Thoughts on the new Converge album? I love it. I think it's great, and I'm not even a fan of Converge. I oh, like it a lot. I think I like it a lot better than Axe to Fall. I like that a lot, too. My uh, favorite album by them is still No Heroes. Favorite Cannibal Corpse album? I'm gay, Evisceration Plague. Fight me. Um... <laughs> 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 Two of the Mutilated, by far. I'd say Two of the Mutilated, considering how generic that answer is, but that was the first Cannibal Corpse album I've ever listened to. And I could have sworn that, like, when you did these live shows, it would tell you how many people were watching. That's on, like, other sites. I don't think they do that on YouTube. Yeah, on blog TV they do, but not on YouTube. No, because I, I watch a bunch of YouTube live streams, and it's always like, hey, you have this many people watching, and... As many people have liked this. And... I don't know. Yeah. No statistics available yet. Well, fuck you. <laughs> I think you've dropped the most f bombs tonight, Brandon. You gotta chill out. Yeah, chill you out, dude. Chill, chill out. out. You're no, funny. never, never. Uh, <laughs> that's a. You can't food. fucking silence me. Uh, someone also asked best suffocation song. Um. I like Souls to Deny. I'd have I to say... The live stream is an option to click on. I'd Souls. say either F, uh, Infecting the Crypts, Bind, Torture, Kill, or Pierce From Within. One of those three. Thoughts on Chris Barnes punching Travis Ryan. Chris <laughs> Barnes is a pussy. Anal Cunt said it best. Yes, Chris Barnes is a pussy. He's a douchebag. You need to see this one interview with him. He's talking about uh, about pot, and he's like, the cannabinoids were put here on this planet for us to By smoke. Another I saw that alien interview! Or or an alien being. <laughs> I've seen that interview. That was, like, really recent, wasn't it? Yeah, like, he goes on for, like, five, ten minutes just... And that so is the hypocrisy... It's like, dude, you smoke yourself stupid. Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, favorite, favorite Nickelback album. <laughs> Silver Side Up. Yeah, brutal. Yeah, Dark Silver Side Up, man. Fuckers. So, favorite Iron Maiden album, someone's asking. None of them. None of them. Uh, Seven Son of the Seven Son is their best album, in my opinion, but my favorite album by them is... Um, Number of the Beast. Yeah, I had to go with you on that. Except for, like, I don't know, like, up there, it's definitely up there with uh, the self-titled and Killers for me. I'm such a douchebag for saying this, but a matter of life and death. That's a solid mm -hmm. album. That's a great I think it's the best album post the reunition with um, Bruce Dickinson. So yeah. out of those four, I think a matter of life and death is. Definitely. I think out of I, I think when uh, Bruce reunited with them, I think their best album since then was actually the first record they released, which was Brave New World. I like that record. Yeah, that's a really good one too. That's good, yeah. Like the Wicker, like I'll still put on like the Wicker Man every once in a while, and I still get enjoyment out of it. Yeah, Brave New World was great. I just think Days of Death may have fallen a little bit short after that, and then they definitely and, pick it up a notch with A Matter of Life and Death, and then I I think the Final Frontier is. It was it's flip flop. I, it's a great I album, really, but I just can't stand the first two tracks. I I actually do really enjoy the Final Frontier. It's just it was probably the hardest Iron Maiden album for me to get into with Bruce as the vocalist. Because I really I really can't get into the material with Blaze Bailey as their vocalist. I used to love those albums. Now I have a very hard time listening to them because I realize yeah. how repetitive it is. Yeah, I'm I'm There's not like a, a thousand I'm, choruses in each song. And yeah, I'm not that big of a fan. Over again. <laughs> I still have a high regard for uh, the first two albums with Paul Diano because Killers. Oh, absolutely, those are classics. The the yeah the the, the, self, <laughs> the, the I mean the fan like the Phantom of the Opera song is like easily one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs of all time. It was I mean, like if it doesn't have Dickinson on vocals. I can't get into it. 
Here's a good question. True or false, Death Clock's music is getting better, but there is less humor. Um, I kind of agree with that, actually. Um, yeah, but I think they're getting better without the humor. Well, I mean, they're getting a little bit more serious, and I think the music is actually benefiting from that, even though they still keep, like, the humor still present. I mean, like, I ejaculate fire. That's fucking hilarious. And the video for it is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know. I like the new Death Clock album. I just think musically it's nothing we haven't heard before. Yeah, uh, it, it is. Less humor. It's more... I like the serious direction. But I'm just gonna. I personally like the the goofier side. I love the first album, probably. Yeah, the Death Clock Death Album One was amazing. Um, Death Album Two is my favorite. Yeah, yeah mine too. Like Death Album it's Two. Like the perfect mix. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna most be the guy. I don't like Death Clock. It's okay. How dare you? I'm not true. I know. Um, You're not most true. Of, most depressing metal song ever. The white entirety of Woods Five. Yeah, Ooh. Woods Five is horribly depressing. <laughs> um, the White at the End of the World great. by My Dying Bride. That That's song. Just, halfway through the song, you want to shoot yourself in the face. <laughs> You're just like searching for the gun. It's horrible. I love the song, but God, it's depressing. And I would also say the entirety of Woods Five. Yeah, I I honestly can't think of any depressing out there. I heard. I'm guys, a fag that considers it his favorite. You guys, I gotta go. I gotta go with Avril Lavigne. <laughs> Just the emotion, <laughs> the heartbreak that she felt on this album. I mean, so nobody's home. Take me away. How does it feel? Fall to pieces. Emotional masterpieces. <laughs> Actually, I hit the back of the to some of these girls. So, you know, I'll kinda, let her have it. I kind of will think about it like one of the most depressing songs ever, and maybe I'm gay, but I'd have to say one by Metallica, considering it was kind of like written for Cliff. Can't you see her pain? Can't you see? <laughs> Dude, I don't know why you don't have that on your wall. I would. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she was right banging on the back wall, in the next day. To the bed. She's ugly now, but hey. Well, she's dating Tra Chad Kroger. Actually, he she's engaged to him. Why do you know these things? Because people <laughs> post it on my newsfeed, dumbass. Did someone doesn't know Why are you friends with these people? I don't know. <laughs> Why do you consider these people friends? Exactly. <laughs> Dude, you want to go I'm, old school? I guess I'm, I guess I'm not sure. WWF enough. the music, bitch. All right. <laughs> Maybe another really depressing one is I'm six feet from the edge and I'm thinking <laughs> Who's the guy in the middle with the white glasses? That's me. That would be uh, KH Fan Forever 23. Dude. Duncan, I'm motherfucker. Douchebag. We don't like, we don't yeah, like that's the douchebag that none of us like. He's just yeah. kind of here. I'm going to take him off now. Fuck. Oh, fine. Swag specs I want more no. teeth, but I don't want to get up. You're such a grandma, Sean. T is <laughs> amazing. Shut your hole. <laughs> Back in my day, we didn't have tea. Yeah, have some whiskey, honey. Makes you feel better. I would right now. I would. Does right anyone now. even know what that's from? No. Let me guess, who lines is it anyway, right? No. Yeah, you and your whose line is it anyway. Dude, that is the funniest show of all fucking time. Don't judge me. <laughs> no. Right, we're getting way off topic here. This is about your metal. Alright, alright, alright. Let's go. all right, let's pick a serious topic to discuss. Like a, okay. a a good one. Whoops. Um As Sean strokes his beard. <laughs> In a fuck yeah Sean, face. Sean has good topics. I got my little beard. Um, as Sean um, has beard. In a fuck yeah Sean face. has good topics. I got my little beard. Who's echoing? What the uh, hell? It's not Sean, me. I think someone pulled out their headphones. In a fuck yeah Sean has good topics. <laughs> it you know, it is not me. Echoing. Not what me. It's not me.
I'm not on that page. John. Hello. Did you all die? Uh, I, 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 I think it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Did you guys die? Hello. Yeah. All right. I think we get more comments. Let's just try to answer some of these. Thoughts on the Machine Head concert getting canceled by Disney? Huh, they talked okay, about that a, while I saw there's them. a good one. Fuck I Disney. think I already know what the answer to this is going to be collectively, but someone asked, Progressive Rock versus prog uh, Progressive Metal. That's I can't stand Progressive Rock, personally, so... I think, um... That's a hard one for me to pick, honestly. I don't care for Progressive, so if I had to pick metal, I guess... I think I'll say progressive rock only because back in its infancy, there was a lot of fearlessness in the music, and pretty much everything was a lot at the time. You know, they just threw in everything except the kitchen well, sink. Well, a lot of that stuff, a lot of that stuff applies to a lot of modern progressive metal as well. A lot of those, a lot of the bands are pushing the envelope to really. I think the, stand yeah, but out. I think it's a little bit more tame in these modern generations of metal bands. I mean, well, I mean that. There are plenty of bands. There are plenty of bands that keep it tame, sure. But I mean, there are some bands that are really throwing weird shit out there. Yeah, I mean, there was just so much innovation in the '70s and '80s when that was, you know, brand new. But a lot of it obviously didn't go very far. But it still kind of existed. Like, but, take BT Band. I mean, they throw in like weird circus sounds and weird video exactly. game I'm sounds. Not and... it's, it doesn't happen. And yeah. it's just, I think less common. <laughs> No, it is. A lot of bands, like, they find their formula, and it's a formula that so many bands follow, and they just stick to the path, the beaten path that's already been made for them by the bands of before. Also, a lot of people, there's a comfort and consistency, so... Yeah, that's true, too. A lot of people aren't, aren't open to a lot of new stuff, so if, you're getting, if you're, they're getting handed more of the same, they're fine with it. Yeah, that's I why think so many there's just less variety these days with the yeah. more impressive metal sound. So I think that's there's a so little many... more to draw from in progressive rock. So. That's why so many um, that my vote, I think. Like, uh, either just black metal or like well, two groups, like three groups of fans I can think of that are kind of like that beaten path area would be like deathcore fans, black metal fans, thrash metal fans. Yeah, yep. you got that yes. right. You got that right. Because they want either something that sounds like every other thrash album Sounds like every other black metal album sounds like every other deathcore album. Yeah. And I have to respect those bands like Bolt and Sane that kind of go out there and do something new. And looking back on it, you're right, back in the 70s, a lot of that stuff was unheard of. Yeah, some made it, some didn't, obviously, but it still yeah. got its fair chance. So, Fulton, I'm assuming you know the band Focus... Of course. Yeah, they're one of the only kind of like progressive, rocky kind of bands that I can stand at all. <laughs> I've been in the focus since I was a little kid, so. Um, someone's asking best big four band. <laughs> oh, this is Speaking... gonna get bloody. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna I get think... bad. I think. Yeah. I think Wait. for me. What For was me, the question? Time, it's the be what you, which band do you think is the best out of the big four? Hmm, I for, for, I'd go with Metallica me, just hands down. I like Metallica the most. I'd say despite for their me, new stuff. Uh, for me personally, all time it would be Megadeth, but like nowadays it's Anthrax. Um, I'm gonna go with Slayer because I don't like any of the other ones. Hmm. See, well, most of the big Megadeth. Most of the big four, most of the big four, just feels so inconsistent to me. Like there'll be an album I like, three albums I don't like, an album I kind of like, two albums I don't like. With Me with Metallica, I liked every single release until Saint Anger. So and that's maybe... why I come in. I like Saint Anger. I actually <laughs> like Saint Anger as well. So you guys are so untrue. The only thing I, I hate about Saint Anger is the snare. Yeah. But the the thing is, when I say like nowadays, Anthrax being the best ones, because I think that their newest album, Worship Music, was better than like World Painted Blood, Thirteen, and Death Magnetic. 
Yeah, World Painted Blood was really boring. I actually liked a Christ Illusion and um, Christ God Illusion was a really good album. Guy I really liked. I really liked too. Yeah, that was a good album. That but was probably people, the people have South of Heaven, bitches. New metal and all this crap. I'm like, are you serious? It's still a Slayer record. It's just like, it, in my opinion, God Hates Us All is the best album they did when Dave Lombardo wasn't in the band. Like, for me, yeah. that album, like, yeah, it wasn't like pure straight up thrash metal, same thing over and over again. That's why I liked it. It was. It was different. Not happier in my opinion. It was heavier and A lot of comments now. Yeah. Um, I can't even keep up with half of them. Yeah, I just realized. Okay, there's a. Yeah, right there, Hocus Pocus by Focus. That is such an amazing song. I love that. When BT Bam first did the polka style, I lost my shit. <laughs> Cynic or Dream Theater? That's a that's a sick question. Cynic. I, Easy. Yeah, dude, Cynic. I love Cynic. 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 I'm going to be the only one that's going to say Dream Theater here. I love them both, but I... Well, Focus is one of my favorite albums of all time. So. Focus stood the test of time for over 15 years before they even did a follow-up. So you know what? It was released when That's I was one. Really remarkable in and of itself. So it was released when I was fucking one. It's is a quality over quantity here. I'm torn. I can't see. That's how it is for I'm, me. I love Dream Theater to death, but I could I would take Focus as one album. Over the entire Dream Theater discography in a second. Dude, I love Trace and Air more than uh, Focus. Really? Yeah, I'm a Trace and Air guy. Really? Trace and Air just yeah, like, I'm a Trace and Air guy. What? Every Trace. I love the EP. Oh, yeah, dude. Carbon Based Anatomy from well, last year. I Carbon think based. Carbon Based Anatomy. I liked uh, the Retraced EP where they kind of did. Oh, like, yeah. No, Retraced is awesome. All right. So someone asked, where did that even go? This might be a little bit dangerous. So thoughts on Rolling Stone magazine? <laughs> I <laughs> fucking hate Rolling Stone. Rolling Brad. Stone magazine is the biggest fucking joke ever. Well, I think President Obama is on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. Oh, and, uh, nice. star. crap! O officially a joke. <laughs> yeah, officially. I was really confused. I just, Why is I he on the cover of it? Rolling Stone anyway. because he's president. It's supposed wasn't it? It's supposed to be like a music magazine mostly. Yeah, that's why I'm and, asking why he's on the cover. And then they started stepping out to all this like random pop culture bullshit, and now we got Obama on the cover. The top ten album metal albums list made me lose it. Oh one my god! On, Don't even one was on there. Four Metallica albums on it. They put on albums of like I think they put Corn or something on there. I'm like, no, no, no. They put Led Zeppelin and Guns N' Roses on that list. Yeah, Guns N' Roses made me just scream. <laughs> Guns N' Roses isn't even metal. Like That's Led Zeppelin, I can kind of see where they would say, oh, they might be metal, but Guns N' Roses. No. Screw yourself. Whoever no. the editor is that decided that I'm going to put Guns N' Roses on this metal list. Yeah, it seems. It seems to be um, a pretty popular opinion. Everyone says that Rolling Stone blows. Yeah. In the yeah, comments. Well, it's yeah. pretty much true. You know, the one thing, I think it was Rolling Stone that did an article on liturgy, and I was extremely shocked by that. Let me guess. Oh, they're so cool with their transcendental black metal, not reveling in the negativity. Like, it's so unique using burst beats instead of blast beats. I want to punch Hunter Hunt Hendricks in the cunt. <laughs> <laughs> He's such an egotistical douchebag. Oh. Alright, someone asked Thoughts on Whitechapel perhaps versus other deathcore bands? See, I... I think Whitechapel is one of the best deathcore bands ever, and I don't like deathcore. Yeah, I, I, I honestly agree with you on that, Brandon. All I right, think Whitechapel has a lot of talent for what they do. My opinion on them and deathcore is they're the best ones going. Best one of all time is Despised Icon. No question. I would I would kind of agree with that, even though I'd say my favorite, well, in my opinion, the best deathcore band right now, since Despise Icon's not around, is All Shall Perish, but that's just me. I think well, All I Shall think Perish is more like technical. Guys. Yeah, technical I mean, they're, they're kind of. I mean, 
I mean, White. I mean, not Whitechapel. All Shell Parish is kind of moving away from deathcore and making going more death metal these days. Yeah, more tech. I want to say all kind of tech death. Yeah, yeah they're especially kind of, their guitarist. He's crazy. Francesco Artisato is a monster on guitar. I guess when it comes to like the last album put out, All Shell Parish destroyed the new Whitechapel. Oh, by far. Oh, by dude, far. This, I think this is where it ends. Is incredible. I think like uh. Old Whitechapel versus Old All Shall Perish, Old Whitechapel, all day. Yeah, I I'd agree with that. I will the Somatic Defilement, and this is Exile over their first three albums. Yeah, I like This Is Exile to a point. I, I actually like the new Whitechapel a lot more than anything, though. For yeah. death, for, for straight-up pure deathcore. All, I, I, I honestly... It deathcore. It's more metalcore, if you ask me. It's, it's it, For me, it honestly, like... I have to say, I love everything Whitechapel's put out, so I can't really say one There's thing like about, about no the music. There's no blast beats on the new album, and I think that's a key part of Deathcore. So See, I would kind of not categorize it as Deathcore. I can agree with that uh, to a point. The, the thing that keeps it Deathcore for me is Phil Bozeman. Yeah. He definitely keeps it Deathcore for me, vocally at least. I mean, the music, yeah, you can definitely kind of... Uh, classify it as metalcore, but I, with Phil Bozeman over it, I think it kind of stays in the deathcore genre. I kind of, I kind of say that with the drums too, because I think this is like some of the best drumming I've I've heard on a Whitechapel album like ever. Because it Ben Harker, but it's not deathcore. You know yeah, I mean? it, yeah. Well, Probably it, like the, my personal opinion. I'm not really a drummer, but personally, I think the drumming on uh, the. Uh, a new era of corruption was way, way more technical, like from a drumming standpoint. Yeah, that was yeah, because Kevin Lane was a very, very uh, creative guy. It's Some just of it just kick patterns were retarded. Huh? Some of the kick patterns and the fills were just retarded. Yeah, um, I mean, his drumming on the first three albums were were pretty great, but it sucks that the guy couldn't put it, pull it off live. Yeah, his oh. face that sloppy. We just got a good a good question. What? Um, what defines metal for you? Ooh. I, damn oh, it! Fuck. I have a I video. Even, I don't I have see a question that question. I'm about to upload with this exact question. Really? Huh. Yes. <laughs> I guess I, I I might not even upload it. I might redo it because I'm gonna kind of make it more specific. What makes metal? God, I hate that. I don't know. That's why I was making the question video. Is I don't know the answer to that. I mean, it's all going to be personal opinion, and and, and it's all going to be subjective, because different people can consider different things metal. Like, if you take it from, like, a perspective of different, you know, uh, time periods, back in the 80s, you know, like, hair metal and stuff would have been considered, oh, yeah, this is heavy metal. Like, Black Sabbath would have been considered, like, this is the heaviest metal to ever be made. But today, the heaviest metal to be made would be, like, death metal and deathcore and stuff. That's, that shit's heavy. So yeah. it's definitely... Yeah. Doom. Know, yeah, Doom stuff is heavy as shit. Hey, you, put, you said deathcore being the heaviest metal. It's not metal. <laughs> Deathcore's not metal. <laughs> It's shit. I make personal preference when I make genres. <laughs> yeah, it's actually multiple. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna get a bunch of elitist comments on this once it goes up. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck Screw them. Considering we just we just spent like shirt. 15 minutes talking about Whitechapel. Yeah, we need a shirt. We plopping like, more of these questions. I like how they're actually feeding us. I wasn't anticipating this at all. Yeah, I hope. I'm I'm searching through these, but they're they're coming actually really fast. The, That's what um, she I said. Don't even but see the question that you just um saw. Nile or dying, dying Nile or dying fetus. Dying fetus. Dying, dying fetus. fetus. Dying fetus. I don't like either of them. So, <laughs> like, I pretty much came to that conclusion after I heard both of their new albums this year, and D dying fetus ultimately wins. Uh, to me, they're just two different bands entirely. I don't think I could pick one over the other. Oh, that's yeah, a pretty good one. What are some cliche. metal cliches? That all metalheads are douchebags. Yeah. 
Yes. And hey, metalheads are like the nice And and, yeah. and and yet all metalheads are most metalheads are pretty much down to earth nicest dudes ever. Yeah, dude. Like when I go to a show, much. I'll end up talking to like fifty people that would be like, "Oh, hey, nice shirt," or "Hey, who are you here to see?" And you just talk to people the whole yeah. night, and everyone is friendly and life. open. It's awesome. <laughs> Brandon, you know a lot about coming really fast, don't you? Where, where is this? <laughs> oh God. Uh. <laughs> Favorite Death Clock song? Oh, the Galaxy from the new album. So much. <coughs> nothing. Mermaid nothing. Or... Oh. Mermaider. Mermaider two. Mermaider two. Mermaider one, bitches. Mermaider two. The Water see, God. I got to the see Death God. Clock last Sunday, and they played Mermaider, and they played my favorite song. Well, I couldn't go because I was broke as shit. And then you went and bought Halo Four. Well, I just got money, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's I why. I more tea, and I pissed. I actually filled my cup with piss. With piss? Yeah. That's hot. Damn! That's hot. <laughs> Google Plus Hangout? Better drink my own piss. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's, oh. that's hardcore. Yeah, that's how I roll. I'm getting more hardcore than that. <sighs> that's um, how I do. You know... Whoa. Fan song is coming a in like crazy right now. Classic. Best song on the first Lonely Island album. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh man, I probably have to say. Uh, I don't even know any of that. I owe you one handshake. <laughs> uh, that would be Parabola six seven five. Oh, he sure. comments all the time on my yeah, videos. Yeah, he does. a handshake. Okay, wait. There, there's a good one that I think might yeah, my pants. be a really good... Um... Yeah, Jizz in My Pants is my favorite off the first Lonely Island. Okay, so someone asked about the new All That Remains. Should we go into that? Oh, yes. Uh, let's do no. it. I think, I think this okay, is going to be Let's go into a collective rant. Let's do I it. Re okay, I think all of us are on the same page with this. Alright, I actually listened to half of it. I can't even see what I'm doing anymore. The only reason why I went through half of it is I couldn't stomach the rest. <laughs> exactly. You, you will be happy you haven't heard the rest, because the rest is worse. The rest is, the rest yeah, is yeah. actually worse. It yeah. only it only gets worse as the album goes on. I don't know how that's possible, because that's probably one of the biggest pieces of crap I've heard this year, <laughs> other than the new Nile and the new Burzum. Like, yeah, I dude. Would yeah. The top three. I guess I'm happy because yeah, I haven't heard it yet. Yeah, dude, New All yeah. That Remains is in my top three most disappointing Wait. shit releases this year. I'm not disappointed. But there was, but there was, was still there was still Adrenaline Mob this year. That is my number one. That's my number one. Yeah, I honestly think this New All That Remains beats that. Because honestly, I mean, I I don't hate the Adrenaline Mob album. I just think it was definitely way subpar to what Dude, I do. When you were. put Mike Portnoy and fucking, um... What's his name from Symphony X? Russell Allen. Russell Allen, and you put them together... And they create that pile of crap. <laughs> there, that's that's way way under their potential. Way. I under. would give I mean, that album probably one, a seven. I have for one, I have not heard have, the new Mob album. I haven't heard it because I don't give a crap about any of it that goes like <laughs> I don't care about Mike Portnoy. I hate Dream Theater. So for me, the worst album this year is the new Nile. Um, yeah, not, I don't dude, know if I'm gonna put the new All That Remains in that list just because I knew it was gonna suck from the beginning. When I heard All That Remains has a new album, I was like, "Oh, that album's gonna suck because the last <laughs> two albums blew." See, uh, I, that's where I differ I a lot of the time. Take it over how bad. Because honestly, band I will is. say I will say that I actually enjoyed their recent their out their previous album for We Are Many. Yeah. It actually kind of, it actually was kind of heavy, and it was kind of it kind of reminded me of like Follow My Deals and stuff. See, Overcome was meh, but I, I knew that this album was not going to follow up to. Two weeks is the heaviest this. song I've ever heard. See, it, for We Are Many, I thought was a really decent album. I thought they really got a lot of their sound back from the Follow My Deals that they really lost on Overcome, and so I had kind of high hopes for this album. And when they released Down Through the Ages, I actually really liked that. Besides the fucking auto tune in the chorus. 
Then yeah. they released Stand Up. Hey, don't oh, look at the comic I lost. Quick. I lost it all. What are we looking for? There's something that Duncan will appreciate on there. He'll see it. What is it? Uh, uh, yeah, I see it. I think. Oh wait, I I I honestly cannot see it. Um, it says. In this moment, or straight line stitch? I have no idea what that other band is. Uh, I'd have to say straight in this line moment. Straight line stitch is horrid. I, I say in this moment. Yeah, you're straight lucky. Straight line folk. stitch sucks. Yeah, you're a lucky folk. Don't. That's my advice to you. Don't. Um, I'm. So I'm, I, I'm guessing I'm the only one in here that likes straight line stitch. Well, you're the only one that likes in this moment. I can. Yeah, I've never so heard them. Moment. So. I, I know you love them, that's why I said you. Uh, prayers on bass. That was like a song that I learned way back in the day. I'm, I, obviously I would like in this moment more considering that I'm actually friends with them, so... Mm. Okay, that's I think, the factor in there, Duncan. Okay, I think there's three questions that we can blast through pretty quickly. Alright, do it. One of them says, favorite song from Epic Cloud. True Love. Aww. True North. Wow. Dude, that is, True Love? <laughs> <laughs> I just said True Love, I'm an idiot. Hold on, I need to I need to find my copy of Save Our Now. True True North for me is my favorite. Save Our Now. Yeah, Save Our Now is mine for sure. I'd probably have to say Save Our Now as well, but technically that's not even a Devin Townsend song. He made it his own. So No guys, you gotta choose Lucky Animals. Lucky Animals is we all love it. That should just be excluded from that. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to say that because I actually like that song. That's like the only Devin Townsend song I like. Grace is ridiculous musically. That riff is just. That's yeah, Grace is awesome. <laughs> that riff goes through like maybe seven or eight changes before it repeats again. And the remake of Kingdom is awesome. Yeah, yeah the remake of Kingdom is perfect. Actually, I, I will bring up one question for the the remakes of. He remade um, Hyperdrive, and he did um, Kingdom on this. Out of those two remakes, which one do you think is the better one? Kingdom. I really love the new version of Kingdom. I also like the new version of Hyperdrive as well, but I, I still kind of like Hyper the original Hyperdrive, the new version's um, awesome. I'll probably have to say Kingdom, for me, wins, just because I love the original version of Hyperdrive better, but I love Annette's on that, so what? Um, yeah, see, that's exactly where I am. I like the original version of Hyperdrive more, and then I like the new Kingdom better. Oh, uh, yeah. I like Here's the new the... version of Hyperdrive better, personally. Yeah. All right. And um, then the other, the yeah. other question that I liked was, uh, was it Children of Bodom or Demu? Is that what I thought? Uh, oh, I don't like Cradle Demu at all. Cradle of Filth or Demu. I'd have to say Bodom. I'd um, say Bodom. I'll say Demu. Right, if it was Bodom versus Demu, even if it was Cradle of Filth versus Demu, or Children of Bodom versus Demu, it's, it's going to be Demu either way. See, I, I would go with Children of Bodom or Cradle of Filth. I don't like Demu at all, so I'm a big Children of Bodom fan. I hate the Demu. Children of Bodom album. That album is unforgivable, in my opinion. I, <laughs> it was so bad, I couldn't review it. Like, I physically couldn't review it. It was yeah. just so terrible, I couldn't find the words to express that my album. utter disdain for how ridiculously horrible it was. That uh, album does not exist to me. Yeah, same here. That's why I sold drunk. Me, and that's, I'm always going to hold that one against them. I, so, I, I sold that copy back, thank god. They have not made an album since Blood Drunk. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then oh. there was another question that I just someone, lost the other one that um that I saw. Uh, someone asked, Motorhead or ACDC? Motorhead. Oh, Motorhead. 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 That's, That's a, a really good question. Because both bands are just like the same from album to album. Yeah, but Motorhead at least oh. is a little bit more interesting than the same drum beat. See, for I, I I agree with Shaw C D C. I hate ACDC. AC yeah, yeah. I think ACDC is going to win for me. You just got to be that guy, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you have to Fuck be it. that guy every time. Oh, you, you can't do that to like, me. Corellia or Art by Numbers. 
You can't do, do you that. You guys man. like Nightwish? Yes. Uh, Dude, yeah. Yeah. Nightwish. Yes. We all love Nightwish. I don't know if you can say we all do. Does Fulton? <laughs> well, what? Fulton, I'm not sure. You um, like Nightwish? I haven't listened to enough Nightwish to to know. What I heard, I like. So. All right, okay. So we all collectively can say we all like Nightwish. Pretty much. Yes. That's uh, one. That's one journey I need to go on one of these days. So. All right, let's do it right now. Best Nightwish album, go. Dark Passion Play. Dark Passion, Passion Play. Play. I'm that guy that every Nightwish fan hates. I I I I but I'd say for me, uh, either Once or Century Child's like. Close Thank second. you. Once is the best for, for me. For me, it's Dark My Passion Play. I, my, my, least, perfect. my 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 least favorite album of theirs is their first, their debut, Angels Fall First. Yeah, because their debut is lame. I thought it was alright. I liked I it. I thought it was pretty good. I liked it. I would like, go as far as blame. Like all all their all the stuff that I've heard from them, I have not like uh, hated at all. Like I've loved every single thing that I've heard from this bit from them. Mm. Uh, um, I think this person joined late. It. They said, uh, "What do you think of Woods Five? I think collectively, we all think it's a masterpiece. Perfect, almost, almost, almost perfect. Wait for it to arrive on my doorstep. Um, yeah, it's my favorite album I've ever heard. So that's my answer. Yeah, I think it's quite remarkable that not any one of us can say anything bad about it. Uh. Yeah, I can't really. It's say just, anything. it's just you can't. It's such a good album. It's so solid, and I couldn't remember it." I tried to review it, but I was like, I actually still had the video. I was just at a loss for words. Yeah, yeah I couldn't review it. I decided not to, just out of respect for David Gold and out of respect, or uh, just out of pure me not knowing what the fuck to say. Well, I am going to re-review review it, it, but I'm going to do it high. <laughs> um, I can't wait to do a drunken rant. Drunken rants are fun. I'll do that once, but I might do that again. We'll see. Above the Weeping World, that review is going to be went on high. Uh, so when I, I, think, I, you, I think I'm the only one in here that hasn't heard the new Woods V Bray. Wow, you really? Suck. I thought yeah, you did. I, I, I saw. Yes. What are you, some kind of queer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suck. <laughs> what? Well, I honestly don't think you'd have too much of a problem with it. What are you, a queer? A <laughs> 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 Ain't like me. You should be hanging from a tree. That's what my grandpa. <laughs> um. I think we should talk about worse? bloodbath. Oh, uh, there's another question saying, "Who's worse, Joey Jordison or Travis Barker?" <laughs> Travis Barker. Barker is worthless. Although I'm, am, I'm gonna put this out there. I am excited for something that Travis Barker is involved in. Uh, Psycho White with Yellow Wolf. It's a EP with him doing drums for Yellow Wolf. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Jump yeah. for a cowboy or the Black Dahlia murder? Well, Black Dahlia. Good question. I'd have to say Black Dahlia for me. Yeah, Dahlia for me too. Especially after seeing them Sunday night. They were so tight live. I haven't seen them in two years. That's like the That's top of the top for a cowboy. I'm gonna, just because I didn't care for the last job for a cowboy, I'm going to say uh, Black Dahlia. Mm-hmm. Well, I get way more enjoyment out of um, Genesis and Ruination than a lot of Black Dahlia albums. Yeah, I, I think say... my favorite, I think my favorite Black Dahlia album has to be Nocturnal. I'm a Ritual guy. Ritual is a great album. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to say Black Dahlia Nocturnal. as well. Uh, I saw them live. Musically, they were insanely tight live. Their antics were. Pretty funny. They're they're pretty much the tightest live band I've ever seen. Yeah, they were definitely really tight, especially yeah. playing in Scooby Doo costumes. So I got to give them a lot of credit for that. Oh yeah, you went to that you went to that Rock and Shock thing at the yeah. Palladium in 2008. I yeah. hate you. And the thing is, I didn't really know much of their music at the time, and they still, you know, shock me. So oh, I remember I saw pictures of that, and I saw that on their uh, Majesty DVD. <laughs> Which is hilarious, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably the best band DVD I've ever seen. Oh, for sure. We got a follow-up question that he said, um, "Is Black? What would you consider Black Dahlia murder? Deathcore or death metal? Death, death metal. metal. They're not deathcore. We're, We're not deathcore at all. Are you serious? Dickhole. 
Who will punch you in the dick hole if you call them Deathcore? Everyone I know calls them Deathcore. Everyone. Punch, not anywhere near Deathcore. <laughs> no breakdowns in their music. Yeah, show me a song there that's Deathcore. Maybe. I have always considered them death metal, and I never understand why they're put into the Deathcore genre. What, maybe because they only heard the intro to Unhallowed, the song Unhallowed? With dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that's probably the only thing they heard, and then they didn't hear anything. Yeah, they didn't listen to the people first after. Think of, I wouldn't even consider that to be a breakdown. Oh, here's another good one. Uh, thoughts on the new Rings of Saturn. I know Amazing. Sean can go off on that. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I very, haven't heard it. Very mixed feelings on that. For me, songwriting is phenomenal, except for some parts feel forced. They really, really could have toned back the production. Really shouldn't have triggered the snare how they did. And they should have made the drums sound better. And if they wouldn't have EQ'd the vocals the way they did, it would have been awesome. But because they did all that crap that I just said, it's an annoying album to listen to. And I'm probably going to re-review it, because the more I listen to it, the more I'm annoyed by it. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 if I had to score it. I just See, if I were to give it a score, I would get destroyed. I would give it like a 4 or 5 out of 10. I just thought it was boring for half of it, and for the most part, it, just, it felt so forced on their part. Like, they just did it, some parts to just to be technical. We want to be super technical, so let's make it fast as shit. I always want to throw in a new riff here. Let's do it. I'm probably going to re-review it when Unique Leader sends me the promo. Um, I guess if I had to say this, though, their first album is amazing. So I had extremely high hopes for this. I'd have to give... Holy shit, this thing is back again. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I'd have to I'd have to give the new Rings of Saturn if I were to rate it I'd probably give it a uh, oh, I seven think I can kill it seven point five or an eight. <laughs> See, I I also didn't Holy like that. Crap. I didn't I didn't like their other thing. album. What I didn't like it? their other album that much. So I have something. I don't know. I'm gonna try to take a picture of it right now. Huh, this is a pretty good one. Um, when did you discover yourself as a metalhead, and what makes you different from the pack of mainstream listeners? Oh, shit. Yeah. That's a, that's a great question. That's a good one. I guess I discovered I was a metalhead after, like, not when I was into P.O.D. because they're not metal. Um, but I always liked the heavier side of them, and then my cousin showed me the, the core band, Zayo. And... As soon as when I heard the screams performed by Dan Wyden, I crapped myself and said to myself, this is going to be my life, pretty much. And from there, I just started looking up the bands, and it was just kind of like a process that I was eased into. I guess you could say it was I was eased into metal, and by the time I was like fully immersed in it, you could consider me a metalhead, I guess. Dude. Uh, I, I'm kind of on the same page with Sean on this, because uh, back then when I was around that age, I was into P.O.D. and stuff, didn't really consider them metal. But uh, then I heard, then uh, one day I was streaming through my friend Jamie's iPod, and he had a, uh, I, I always saw that he had System of a Down on there, but I never want, never felt like checking it out. So when I did, I checked it out, I checked out the song Chop Suey, and as soon as that really heavy riff comes in, and I was just like blown away by um, how it sounded and how heavy it was. And then I decided I'm gonna start listening to metal now. And this guy, and this, this, this kid, band for me. And he, and the funny thing is, my friend who had System of a Down on his iPod isn't even a metalhead. <laughs> I, okay, yeah, I just, officially have no idea what this thing is. Well, you got a picture of it? Yeah. Can we see it? It's. Almost that looks like a dune bug. It's this thing is huge. Whatever it is, you should probably kill but, it. Um, I'm afraid to squash it because I don't want it to be one of those stinky things. It's worth it. No, it's not. Get high <laughs> off the smell. Sniff <laughs> <laughs> it as sniff it as if it were a sharpie. Sniff it as if it were a sharpie. Yeah. And it's like on my leg too. Pick it up and bite it. <laughs> Identify it. That would be 
incredible. <laughs> I gotta make that. I gotta do that. <laughs> I should have like a flamethrower. So you could burn your whole house. <laughs> 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 Worth it. All oh, for the sake of the lulls. <laughs> as uh, we're all right. laughing as your whole room engulfs in best. Are you? Is that a serious question? Cattle decap or my chemical romance? Is that a serious question? No, wait. I didn't tell you. Wait, something got flagged as spam. Who did that? I didn't do that. I saw a few questions that were flagged as spam. I don't understand why. I saw I saw a comment like uh, say, asking uh, best concert experience. Oh. Huh. I'll I'll go I'll go first and say it first so that I don't have to keep going on about it. But it was when I got to see uh, I got to watch Slayer side stage at Mayhem Fest this past summer. Dude, I'd say seeing Corpaclani. This past Sunday, seeing Death Clock was a fucking experience. It was like watching an episode of Metalocalypse, but make it two hours long, and in front of you, with them performing the music live, and with even more video stuff going on. Oh, throughout um, every song. Speaking of that show, did they play Laser Cannon Death Sentence? No. Oh. I was sad. That makes me mad. Um... For me, I would probably say Trap Them with Toxic Holocaust, Skeleton Witch, and the Black Dahlia Murder because Skeleton Witch. at that show, I met all the bands, and they were all really cool dudes. I got my Skeleton Witch CD signed, I got my Toxic Holocaust CD signed, Black Dahlia Murder signed, my Pick Blake, my face, and then Trevor gave me a t-shirt. Dude, the dudes awesome. in Skeleton Witch were so nice when I met them. I got my picture taken with all of them. They're so cool. They're like some of the nicest dudes I've ever met. Dude, their guitar player looks like Squisgar. Yes, oh, he does. He has the same like long face and everything. Yep. Um, to the person who asked me, Carcass or Agalock, that is very tough. But because Agalock, Agalock, my favorite album of all time. for me. I'm gonna say Agalock. But I, I'd, I'd say Carcass. I love Carcass. I think Ag Luck wins for me. Oh, speaking of Carcass, I just recently found out that like when they play uh, Maryland Death Fest, Michael Amott will not be playing with them. Really? Why? That's I don't know. He's. I don't know. I think he's. I don't know. I don't know why he's not because next year they're not going to be. He's not going to be busy with uh, Arch, Arch Enemy. Enemy. They're not going to be touring. No, they're. I mean, uh, Arch Enemy is going to be playing a handful of shows. I mean, they got for what right now. They're they're confirmed for Vok and Open Air. I don't know. I mean, and, and Maryland Death Fest is not until what May of next year. Yeah, Labor Day. That's I want to go to Maryland Death Fest. I want to fucking see Carcass. I want to see Carcass, Venom, Exodus, Down, Converge. I'm. There's so many bands there. I want to see. Converge is on that too. Yep. Damn. Yeah. Converge, Converge is one of the last bands confirmed. Damn. Yeah, with Down. I'm Duncan, we should go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I, I'm almost considering flying out for that. I'm not. I'm going to be there. Yeah, and I really, gonna, really love the Carcass. I'm gonna die once when I see a couple of those bands. Like Weekend Nachos is opening one of the stages. That alone is gonna make me defecate and have my anus prolapse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna be ready for the rest of the day because I'm just gonna be like holding back my anus from just going onto the ground. <laughs> After Weekend Nachos just rapes me. That's the quarter. Uh, while cattle decapitation is on the subject, thoughts on Monolith of Humanity and the Force Gender reassignment video. Uh, I didn't think well, it was Monolith anything. Monolith in Humanity was great. I thought, honestly, in my opinion, Monolith in Humanity is death metal album of the year. That's just me. Death metal album of the year is in such a top, like toss up for me because I have uh, archaic metamorph ignition on that list. Uh, the new cytotoxin, um, inanimate existence, and cattle decap. I have I have either cattle decap or cannibal corpse. Dying fetus is right up there. Oh too. yeah, for, I, how, how dying I fetus. Um, one of my favorite death metal albums of the year is definitely a tech death album. I just love the new Spawn of Possession. Bolton, you really need to hear um, inanimate existence. I got progressive death metal going on with the faceless. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, yes. I love the new Faceless there's, album. There are a bunch of sellouts. <laughs> Dude, my friend, my friend, my friend, uh, Nick in Ohio, uh, John, I think you probably saw this argument on my Facebook, but he said that, like, Michael King was, like, ripping off Michael Ackerfeld's clean Yeah, vocals. I saw that. I saw that. I was what? like, yeah, you that fucking that too, bro. Like I said, like, the vocals on Autotheism were more like Devin Towns said, not fucking Ackerfeld. No, not at all. Uh, here's a good question. Do you guys wear earplugs to concerts to, pre to prevent yourself from going deaf? No. I do. Because I'm half deaf in my right ear. I have to. I yes, don't. I, do. I, I did at Metal Alliance on my birthday because after when Three Inches of Blood went on stage and they were sound checking, they turned the monitors towards the crowd. And I was right up front, so that was really fucking loud, so I put some earplugs in. For me, um, it depends on who the band is. Like, if it's going to be, like, a really, like, White Chapel, for example, unless I'm going to be, like, way in the back, I'll wear earplugs. But I noticed a weird thing with them because, like, when I was wearing them and I saw um, the band Sexcrement, for half the set I had them in, all the vocals sounded like pig squeals to me for some reason. I took them out and they weren't pig squeals at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it really oh, changes wow. the dynamics of it, I notice. Yeah, yeah that's why yeah. I don't like wearing them. I want to get those kind where it like will just change the decibel level, but not the actual like pitch and stuff like that. Yeah, I would. I need to get a nice pair because I have to wear them to every show now, or else I I risk getting um what is it called tonight tinnitus or oh, whatever. I already have cool. that, so yeah. yeah this, I, I, I play so many shows. In this year, I have like minus 16 decibels or something. I don't remember what the doctor said, but my right ear is completely fucked when it comes to music, which oh, is why I always wear my headphones like this. It's always behind my right ear, because oh, I can only hear wow. well in my left ear. Wow. I, I did question that once. Yeah, always. Really It'll never be on my right ear. That sucks, dude. Wow. Damn. That would be brutal. Um, this is a backtrack. I, I just went through a lot of concerts in my head. I think the best concert experience I had was, was with um, me. Progressive Nation 2008 with three, which win the Bear to Me, Opeth, and Dream Theater all in one night. Wasn't yeah, Dillinger I will be, on the I will be right back. Wasn't, uh, wasn't Dillinger on that tour? No. No? Because I remember seeing a poster from, uh, Mike Portnoy on one of his videos saying that, I mean, that showing that Dillinger was on that tour. They were like opening or something. What is the, the next year it was the, it was supposed to be Pain of Salvation, Beard Fish, Black Mustache, Zappa Play Zappa, and then Dream there, but they had to switch it to Scale the Summit, which is the first time I ever saw them, 2009, and then they switched Big, uh, they, they switched Beardfish with Big Elf. So I don't know if Dillinger played on that tour or not. I'll have to I don't know, that. dude. But there's just a mustache on his screen. Why? Yeah, I don't know why. That's brilliant. <laughs> just wait, 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 wait. Draw a little wait. Pringles Man outline on that. I'm I'm reading I'm reading in one of the comments. It says Varg Vickerness featuring Young Jeezy rolling with Odin Dirty South remix. <laughs> Key to the How gate. many marijuana that would be better than the new ejected. album. The new what? Better than the new person? Yeah. Yeah. Um. That looks so I'm gonna call mine. What the hell? Pop, what are your top? What are your favorite two or three metal albums of 2012? Someone's asking. Uh, number one album of the year for me is Ahab the Giant. Um, number two is a toss-up to um, Cytotoxins, Radiophobia, and. Uh, Oh, what the hell is Woden's Throne Curse? Um, for me, number one would be Phantom Antichrist by Creator. Yeah, number, that's a great 
Number two would be Monolith of Inhumanity by Cattle Decap. And I think number three would be uh, The Electric Age by Overkill. Dude, for me, I got I got my two right here. Number one, Autotheism, Faceless. And for two, definitely new between the barrier to me. I love this every time I... I love it more every time I listen to it. Yeah. For me, it's... It's my favorite BT Bam. For me, it's Woods 5 by Woods V Prey is number one. Um, the Weight of Oceans by In Morning is number two. And number three, I could not tell you at the moment. Yeah, number three is up in the air for me as well, which is why I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Piece of crap for not owning one and two of like the uh, Ahab and uh, Woden's Throne, but I got the promos for them, so I don't feel so bad. But I really want the final of the giant. Dude, I want to buy the giant, but it's so expensive. Uh, check Amazon, dude. Should suffocation it? just break up? Shit. Oh. No, these are not break up. order, but should... I will just say these three are pretty high on the list. Yeah. Oh damn! Well, I got all those. I got all those albums too. Am I the only yes. one that feels like New Gojira is fucking amazing? Am I the only one that feels like the new Between the Buried and Me is kind of unorganized? Probably. Probably. <laughs> Because I feel like the whole thing is like a bunch of ideas just thrown together, and it doesn't um, work. See, I don't know. I think it's wicked cohesive, but I love that random shit. So I mean, maybe I'm a little bit biased towards it. So I, you know, like for it's, me, it's, I feel like they will never ever beat the Silent Circus or Colors. Like see, yeah, I'm weird. Bad. I don't, I don't share the huge love for Colors that most do. Like. Oh. My favorite before the new one I have was Alaska. To see. Alaska's great. Alaska is great. Yeah, the new the new between the barrier to me is almost closing in my top five. But currently, like in my top five, those three albums I named that I think uh Autotheism and uh, I think the New Testament, in my opinion. Autotheism is going to be on my list. I know that for sure. Yeah. Because the faceless have a special place in my heart. I think we have to um, end this within the next half hour, only because if the video goes over two hours, it like has to be edited later, and I don't want to have to do that. So. All right. Yeah. Okay, if you want me, I, dude. If you want me to, I can edit that for you with my super amazing editing software. Mm. Oh shit. That's fine. Alright. I think it'll just save it as is if it's under two hours. So. Hey, uh, hey, Sean, I think this uh, question's for you. How many marijuanas have you injected? Six. <laughs> I, I did so... I injected four marijuanas and snorted two. So I'm really, really, really ripped right now. Um, someone's asking Behemoth or Immortal? Immortal. Uh, behemoth. Immortal. I'd have to say Behemoth. I'd say Immortal. Notice the flag. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, Immortal next to Behemoth. That's probably where the question came from. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I've been listening to a lot of Behemoth lately, actually. The Immortal flag is bigger. It's bigger. Yeah, well, the Behemoth one's sexier, because Nurgle's on it. My dick is there. Bro, oh, there you go, Brandon. Veil of Maya, Born of Osiris. Born of Osiris. I don't like the first two Born of Osiris releases. I only like their discovery, so maybe as a whole I would have to go with Veil of Maya, but I like Born of Osiris as the discovery. I like, more than anything by Veil. I, I love the new Reign. I don't like a, the Higher Place. I don't really like that album much. I don't like anything by Born of Osiris. I can at least tolerate uh, Common Man's Collapse by Velomai, so Velomai. That's still that's still their best album. I don't like the new um, Born of Osiris at all. The Velomai I like was their debut, um, Common Man's Collapse. 
Um, I didn't like the one after that, whatever the hell that thing was uh, called. Id or something. Yeah, Id. I hated Id. And I actually really enjoyed the uh, new one. Eclipse. Eclipse is pretty damn good. It's way too short, though. I, I agree on that. It's, it's way too short. That's like fucking well, rated. That's like... Like, suck a bag that, of dick. Dude, that's, oh. like, that's like rain and blood length. Someone asked, will the album reviewing community ever do a song collab? Well. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, well. 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 There's well. 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 I guess okay. the answer could <laughs> just be said yes. We have been talking about this. I suggested Actually, the idea. Yeah. Uh, I think it was earlier this week. Yeah. I think it was on your um, blog TV, Johnny. I think it was. And... Yep, so we're going to try to do something. That'd be great. I'm gonna I am your it. guitar player. Hey, I'm a guitar player, too. I'm yes, we can have two. Go over the entire thing. Yeah. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to growl and scream. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do nothing but gravity blasts. Good. <laughs> that's, all, that's what I want them to do. nothing but snare the whole time. <laughs> yeah, no kick, no cymbal, just snare. <laughs> No, guys, I'm going to freaking play really light um, drums like uh, Lord Marco does, if you guys know who that is. I'm going to do the pretentious typo-negative baritone vocals. Yeah. Wait, so wait, uh, wait, Sean, do you actually know who Lord Marco is? I believe I do. He he relies heavily on triggers when he plays. I hate it when drummers do that. It's like, like wow. I'm if you ever watch him play, he hardly hits the fucking drums. Like, it's... Ugh. Pisses me off. Um, someone asked, how do you guys feel about the new Coheed and Cambria album, and are you guys going to see them with Between the Bear to Me and Rest of Circles? Uh, um, I reviewed it on my channel already. I thought it was a great album. I think I gave it an 8 point. 7, 8.6, something like that. I just think it's a little bit weak and a little bit anticlimactic. I honestly have not heard the new Coheed and Cambria. I've heard one song. That was it was that it was that eight and a half minute one. Oh, I haven't heard the actual album. I heard it was good, but nothing yeah. like. Uh, it's one. great. It's just I I just want more. And yes, yeah, I will be going to the concert. I'm gonna try like I'm gonna really try to actually go to that Coheed show because I have the last because I haven't seen Coheed since I saw them open for Slipknot like three years ago. I haven't listened to it because I don't care for them, and that should answer the Am I going to the show? <laughs> I'm going uh, for BT Bam. So, <laughs> uh, who's who here is gonna be going to Gojira and Devin Townsend? Yes. Yes. Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. Yeah, is that in January or February, something like that? It's February fifteenth in Worcester at the Palladium. Yeah. There's go. no date near me. Road That's trip. Awesome. Road trip to Worcester, bro. Yeah, I'm not gonna go up far. Yo, Brandon can't be doing that. Yeah, Brandon. Brandon stop wanking. Yeah. Can't happen. Um. Or at least mute yourself. That that that's a no go. No love for Gojira. We were just talking about Gojira. I like I love Gojira. I just don't care for Devin Townsend, and I'm yeah. not gonna travel a long ways to see Gojira since I already saw them. Holy crap! Yo, Brandon, what? you should mute. What? You should like mute that. Triggers equal origin. Well, I'm not playing yeah, anything. Well, uh. Yeah, well, John Lungstrength can actually play heavy drums and all that. I mean, he does. If you guys have ever watched that guy play drums, he does like he does like a certain foot technique for double bass with uh, double strokes and stuff. That's why he has triggers. But that doesn't make anyone faster. Hey, no, I'll kid. Yeah, trigger for those for those who are wondering about triggers, um, they do not make you faster whatsoever. It, just you can fun. go like closer, like typically you have to go like way back and hit it solid every time. But with triggers, it allows you to go. You you work. can you can tap really lightly and then sound fast, which is retarded. I can't for me but as you a you can't drummer, get ones that will detect for, how hard you hit. Me for me as a drummer, I cannot stand that because like I can't. I have to have a have the beater at like a certain distance from the head. In order for me to actually like get a good hit, because if it's like way too close, I can't play that great. 
I need. I like. I like to have some power when I hit the base room. Mm. So, who's going to Winter Sun? So I'm gonna try to. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully me. Hopefully uh, me. I might be. All of us. Uh, probably not me. As, as much as I want to. Uh, going to try. I'm gonna There's try. There's to... one guy in every group. We're all about to agree on something, and here Colton's like, "No, I like ACDC." <laughs> Where he's like, "Oh, I have a word." What do you do? Um, let's... or me? I don't like Devin Townsend. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna try, and later this month, I'm gonna try to go I'm see. I'm cheap. Uh, I'm gonna try to go see Lamb of God on the 25th, and then I'm gonna try to go to Rhode Island to go see Cannibal Corpse with Misery Index and Hour of Penance. Can you guys do the wave no homo? What? <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, we can do the wave no homo. I don't, I don't get it. Hey, I'll start her off. I, I can't see what Oh! Yes! Oh, <laughs> no. shit! Wait, that's gonna come back. Yeah, yeah. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> awesome. One starts in the middle. What the order. Hell? It just like goes um, up to the side. Um, what bands do you call sellouts other than Metallica? I can't really think of any. The thing that pisses me Lincoln off about you sellout is, especially in metal, show me like a, how Dim Your Board Gear has sold out. Show me how. Even Cryptopsy, they may have made an album that sucked, but it wasn't a sellout. Because they're not topping the charts. Like, that's so stupid. Same with Demi Borger. Maybe they're different without Vortex, but they're definitely not selling out. Well, they're they were called sellouts before he left. Like, oh, it's not black metal, so they sold out. Black metal. Like, I just hate those people. Me too. It's so stupid. I don't understand that. The only time I would say a black metal artist has sold out is when they start going over the top with, like, um, re-recording and mm -hmm. doing multiple splits. <coughs> Vaughn! Like, Vaughn is extremely guilty of that. They re-recorded it, re-released, re-recorded it, re-released the demo countless times, and... They are now doing 16 split EPs, each with a song off the original demo that they have re-recorded, but it's a different re-recording than what's on this new album, which is all re-recordings. Like, to me, that's being a sellout. Yeah. Um, let's see. Sean, can you windmill your beard, someone's asking. Um... I do a lot of key. other things with it. Yeah, I do a lot of things with it. Lots Spot of things. the real Jesus. I think he's trying to uh, think of uh, <laughs> who's, who's more real. Uh, who's the more real Jesus? <laughs> 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 I think I think Fulton's the actual Jesus in here. Yeah. Oh well. Um, Wait, does this thing have a halo in it? Yes, it does. It does. It does Perfect. actually. Misery index or misery signals? Misery index. Does that work? Oh, misery signals, I love. Misery oh, signals. Is great. I will agree with you on that. I don't like either of them, so. Well, I guess I'd say misery index. Uh, yeah, I mean that? after I mean after after I heard, first oh, yeah. heard. Uh, <laughs> After I first heard, uh, Fulton, finger your halo. Ever finger since I heard halo. Music, what? Finger your halo. Finger my halo. <laughs> yeah, ever since I heard like oh. Aerosmith, it fucking oh. blows my tits off all the time. Oh. <laughs> Dude, the you're not fingering it; you're fucking fisting. No, wait, then I could do this. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'm gonna go undercover now. <laughs> no one suspects a thing. 
Uh, oh, hey, we're coming up on the two hours. When do you think we want to end this? Uh, we'll try to do it for like another ten minutes or so. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. We started it right at nine, so yeah, it's under two hours. Do you think Morbid Angel sold out? No. No, they didn't sell out. They just made a really crappy album. Yeah, they just stuck. There's, there's a difference between selling out and topping charts than making a complete crap album that even their diehard fans won't buy. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the opposite oh. of selling out. Oh, hey, Sean, here's another question for you. Will you put ornaments in your beard this year for Christmas? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love this. I actually have a brand new Christmas ornament. Yes, many, many ornaments. I get this one. Best catchy riff in death metal. Ooh. Oh. This That's is my new one. Christmas ornament for this year. <laughs> That's amazing. <Nice. laughs> so yeah, catchiest, catchiest death metal riff. Oh, any Gojira riff. Boom. The oh great man. One, like the one at the end of uh, Backbone, I think it is. Dun, dun, dun. Dude, heaviest matter of the universe. Dun, dun. Vacuity. Oh, dude, Toxic Garbage Island. Enough said. Toxic dude, Garbage dude. Island is my oh, favorite Gojira movie. song. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna say the final riff and backbone. <laughs> Gojira. Well, yeah. Actually, come to think of it, a lot of Black Dahlia Murders riffs are catchy. Yeah. Like, what a horrible night to have a curse. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Your necropolis. Um, ne oh, dude, everything went black. Uh -oh. Yeah. It's kind of funny, now that I remember... No, well, no, nothing went black. It's the name of song. Oh. I, just, I just remembered something. That freaking Gojira. Gojira is the only death metal band that's ever toured with Metallica, I think. You might be right on I that. I think Slipknot played with them. They're death metal. Actually, Catchiest, catchiest, <laughs> ca catchiest riff in death metal. Probably "Programmers of Decline" by Gorod. That riff just owns. Metallica is shit, puto. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting catchiest funny. riff in death metal. Probably. Oh fuck! It's a song by Deicide. Um. Uh. Oh, damn, now I'm thinking of it. Oh, Dead by Dawn. When Satan Rules This World. That's the song. Yeah, that's a really catchy one. Yeah. Um, the first, like, catchy first... chug riffs. I love the opening chug pattern to Catatonia's Forsaker. Yeah, me too. So simple. Yeah, agreed. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I love that riff. Um, okay, someone else asked, when you first started listening to death metal, what was the first band of death metal influenced you to be a permanent death metal fan? Oh, Beth. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get hate for this. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get hate, but I'm embarrassed now. Six feet under. Oh. Mine was Cannibal Corpse when I first heard Hammer Smash Face. Mine was Children of Bodom. Hey, they're not death metal. They're melodic death metal. Hmm. You're well, I'd say, I'd say Children of Bodom's kind of up there, too, because I actually did Drag. I think I've heard Children of Bodom before I heard Cannibal Corpse. I think. I think it was when, when I first heard, uh, I think it was Are You Dead Yet. I'm no death metal fan, but Children of Bodom and Opeth would be very high up there for bands that Got me into that kind of style, I guess. And or I mean, Dark Tranquility. Uh, yeah. Believe it or not, in terms of extreme metal, it was partially due to Into Eternity, to believe it or not. I believe yeah, it. Yeah, I remember hearing them before. Like, like the when really I was, like, crazy, you know, falsetto-like vocals. I, I, mean, I listened to Death so early on, but I would consider yeah. Death more of like a crossover thrash metal band than a death metal band, especially when I was listening to them for the first time. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on that. Like, um, like, I almost consider Symbolic kind of like a thrash album. Stu it, Watt needs to just stick with um, Into Eternity and kind of not be in Ice Earth anymore because he's good, but 
he doesn't fit in Oyster, if you ask me. Hmm. If you want to talk I about say... getting into extreme metal, Meshuggah for me, when I was very young. If 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 there is a, I mean, honestly, if if Stu Block just stick stuck with um, into eternity, I would want uh, Ice Earth to bring back uh, Tim Ripper Owens. Same. Absolutely. I'm He's... like the only person that I know of, at least, that doesn't give a crap about Matt Barlow. I agree. Seriously, I, I love He's like Matt. The most Barlow. overrated vocalist in metal ever. I like I like Matt Barlow's vocals, but I prefer Tim Ripper Owens over him way more. Tim destroys any song he's on. He just he's the Ripper. He rips the shit out of that song. Yeah, no, well, I couldn't say the same for him when he. Was, I couldn't say the same for Ripper when he was in Judas Priest. I could give two craps about Priest, so. Yeah. Here's a good question: Can John and Sean do a sexy, harsh vocal duet? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know right now because my dad's sleeping in the other room and he'd probably be pissed if he woke up to hear me uh, gurgling. Um, but yeah, well, actually, I could probably. <clears throat> That's not loud. Uh, but... <laughs> Thoughts on Necrophagus making an album after eight years? They're not making an album. Thoughts on Necrophagus? They, I hate them and they should stop making <laughs> Oh, no, not this again. <laughs> Yeah, let's just. Let's, I, I, this happened every single time. They need to just stop. That's my okay. thoughts. I'm not making okay. a new album. Different, stop. different, different um, question. Do you guys like Epica? Love Epica. Uh, I don't think I've ever listened to them. They're pretty and great. That one and, guy. Aren't it's, they and, like a spinoff of Nightwish though? No. Isn't no. it like Nightwish meets Camelot? Mm, I won't say that. Uh, like I'm trying to think Simone's... of it, isn't there a Camelot album named Epica? That's where they got their name from. Alright. <laughs> uh, yeah, Simone Simmons is one of the reasons why I'm such a sucker for redheaded chicks. <laughs> and boys. Yep. Okay. Can't forget hey. you are. Oh, crap, we got a couple minutes. So let's bust out a few more questions and then we'll get this stuff. Always that guy. Um, oh yeah, I like them. I like nah, I don't care for them. <laughs> Favorite <Favorite>? milk porn <laughs> star. I was just about to read that. <laughs> I, I tell this to everyone. Like for me, my porn site is hellsheadbangers.com. I sit there and feed it to those pictures of those vinyls all day. Let's go to the vinyls and the new arrivals and just beat it every single day. Sometimes three times a day. <laughs> so I'm guessing I'm the only one that's actually watched porn. <laughs> what is porn? Yeah, what is that? It, what is that? This is porn. Motherless.com. Oh God, no! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, wa I'm gonna wear this right now. Of course you are. They got swag. Swag. So why so do we need porn when we have glasses, that? Right? Who needs glasses when you have swag? <laughs> I actually need glasses to see like more than five feet in front of me. Thoughts on the new Soundgarden album? Haven't heard it yet. I haven't heard it either. Nope, haven't heard it. I give zero fucks about Soundgarden. Oh, there you go. Tesseract, good or bad? Tesseract? Uh, I don't care for Tesseract at all. I find them kind of boring. Actually, I have something I didn't even show Brandon yet. Brandon doesn't like Tesseract. I know that. Not at all. Brandon will love this. Do you see that? What is that? This is, is that the, the Concealing, Concealing Fate EP signed by the band. Huh. How big are your music collections? Pretty well good. over a hundred CDs. I have I'm just, looking. I have about a hundred CDs that I have actually bought. I have close to, I want to say almost four hundred albums, like totaling CDs, tapes, and vinyl. I don't want to waste my time and count. <laughs> yeah, me neither. 
I got about a hundred CDs. All I know is I, I got albums sitting all over the fucking place, so I don't. Let me know. check my Discogs page. Yeah. All right. I think maybe one or two more questions, and then we have. My Discogs says I have. Um, opinions on Volbeat. They're pretty good. Oh, yeah. I honestly find there. I honestly find them one of the most catchiest metal bands I've ever heard. They're yeah, we're, we're catchy, literally, we I literally have two and a half band. minutes left before it reaches two hours. Okay. They're According still... to Discogs, I have 327 albums, and that doesn't include a lot of them. So. Huh. Yeah. Uh, I never knew that Volbeat was a metal band. They're kind of they're kind of considered metal band. They're kind of considered a metal band. Metal Archives considers them metal, so that's my opinion. Really? Maybe I'm thinking of a different band. I don't think so. Colors or the Great Misdirect? Colors. Colors. Hand Colors, down. yes. Colors. 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 Hands down. Oh, we all agreed on something. Yes! Yay! Finally. Whoa, right, right at the end. Right at I the think, end. I, I, think, I think that's a sign that we should end. All right, yeah, let's end it. All right. So, I mean, this was a success. This was great. Metal yeah. Melting Pot Volume 1 complete. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, buddy. We should try to do this again next week. Yes, we should. I think it's, I think it's yes. too early to say same time, same place next week, but we'll figure yep. it out. We'll try to figure it out, yep. Precisely. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you to everyone who commented and showed up and watched this and all that good stuff. And Keep it hard rock you. and heavy metal. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> yes. Well, on that note. Wow. <laughs> I'm losing my shit. <laughs> <laughs> this it's is what now. you guys would be getting out of the album reviewing community. Just a bunch of garbage. All right, yeah. we should end it. Got like 30 right. seconds left or something. All right, that's it. All right. All right. See you later, everyone. <sighs> Next Bye. Later. later. Peace. Yeah. Love you. Love you. Love you too. Love you. Ah. I'm still cocaine. <laughs> ah. I came. <laughs>